Hello, and this is a review for exam 3 of dynamics. Um, and the exam is an individual exercise. It will be delivered via Blackboard Responders and Redscope. So you have to connect um, with both at the same time. So once you connect to Responders, you can download it from Redscope and you should have uh, the same time. Um, it will open on Wednesday morning and it will close on Friday at midnight. So you have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to start your exam. You should have plenty of time. Uh, notes and books are allowed. Uh, you can use your tablet to answer the exam on the PDF provided in Gradescope. Or um, if you answer on paper, you can uh, download it and print it. And once you answer, you can scan it. Or if you decide to use a uh, blank paper, please follow the same layout and number of pages. It's important. So uh, Gradescope will identify where you have your answers for each point. So show all your steps, use proper units, solution steps must be neat, and draw a box in the final answers. So you have plenty of time. The exam is um, programmed for 50 minutes, but you will have um, three hours to complete it. So you can check and recheck your answers. So plenty of time to do it very neat. Okay, exams cover chapter 16 and 17. Chapter 16 is planar rigid body motion. And in uh, rigid body motion, we have translation. And now we have rotation about a fixed axis. Uh, and we have absolute motion analysis that include rotation, translation and rotation, relative motion analysis for the velocity and instantaneous center of zero velocity, relative motion analysis, acceleration. And that's uh, what we uh, did. We then use, uh, we then cover uh, 16.8. Okay, now, <coughs> chapter 17, um, we have the kinetic part, so that's the reason why the body moves, so that means forces. So we have a definition of a moment of inertia, um, we have the pl planar kinetic equations of uh, motion, equation of motion translation, equation of motion um, um, and planar kinetic equations of motion. <clears throat> then um, we have uh, translation and rotation about the fixed axis and general plane motion. So those last parts were covered on the um, um, video lectures that I left before. So <clears throat> remember rigid body planar motion. So we have different uh, kind so we have uh, rectilinear translation rectilinear translation there is no rotation about the body and it could also be curvilinear translation so this vertical line remains vertical the whole time so two points uh, do not move relatively to each other in the free body <clears throat> in the rigid body and we have pure rotation when we have pure rotation so the body is not translating. So this point is going back to the original point after one turn. So this is a rotation about a fixed axis. And we have plane general motion in which the body is translating and is rotating at the same time. So the movement can be decomposed in both. So for rotation about a fixed axis, so as someone mentioned before, so all the equations are cumulative. So we are adding more situations, but the previous equations always apply. So we have that omega, which is the angular velocity, is defined as the derivative of theta with respect to time. And alpha, which is the angular acceleration, is the derivative of the angular velocity with respect to time, or the second derivative of the angle with respect to time. So we have the third equation that it relates angular acceleration, theta, and uh, angular velocity 
So there is no time in this. And this equation is a combination of these two. So in reality, so we have only, from these three equations, we have only two independent equations. Uh, there is a particular case when we have angular uh, acceleration constant. So remember, angular acceleration is the derivative of the angular velocity with respect to time. So, and in this case, these equations are very um, similar to the equations for um, linear motion with constant um, acceleration. Remember, that's the equations of the parabolic flight. So we have uh, omega is equal to the initial omega plus the constant acceleration multiplied by time. And if we integrate this equation, so we have that theta is equal to theta zero. So the initial, ang initial angle multiplied by the initial angular velocity and times time plus one half of the angular uh, acceleration multiplied by time. Or we can also have this relationship in between uh, omega and alpha and theta with no time. So that's a convenient equation and this is the equivalent for this case. Uh, for a rigid body, um, we can um, a convenient way of defining the rotation is uh, uh, with the uh, normal and tangential coordinates. So remember, if we have a, a body that is rotating with respect to O, we can define the normal and tangential coordinates, and then we have a normal acceleration and tangential acceleration. And uh, this is rotating with omega and um, with some omega and sorry, with some alpha and some omega. <clears throat> so remember the velocity, the tangential velocity is equal to omega multiplied by the radius and that's in magnitude. And the tangential acceleration is equal to uh, alpha multiplied by the radius. And the normal acceleration is omega squared multiplied by r. And uh, if you don't remember how, where this equation came from, so remember the normal acceleration is v squared over r, but uh, the velocity is omega multiplied by r, omega multiplied by r. And this is a square. So this is omega squared r squared divided by r, omega squared r squared divided by r. We cancel one of the r's in the numerator with the one in the denominator. We have that the normal acceleration is omega squared multiplied by r. Okay, this is for pure acceleration. So the general plane motion, <clears throat> so we decompose um, uh, two points in uh, one in terms of the other. So we can have that the, this, the position of point B is given by the position of point A, which is this, plus the relative position, which is R of B with respect to A. So we can write the, acceleration, the velocity in B in terms of the acceleration in A. So if we consider the acceleration, the velocity in B is equal to the velocity in A plus the relative velocity, which is omega cross R of B with respect to A. So omega, which is the um, angular velocity multiplied by this. So omega will be in coming into the paper, into the screen, or coming out of the screen. Coming out of the screen will be positive if we consider x, y, and so this rotation will be positive. The uh, hand side rule is, will be pointing towards us. And remember the rule, if we have three vectors, the i unit vectors j and k so we have that um, i cross j is k and i cross k is i and k cross i is j so that's the rule so you write uh, these vectors in the counterclockwise uh, direction 
okay uh, so for the acceleration uh, then we have that the acceleration at b is equal to the acceleration at a plus two times and these two times is the relative acceleration of b with respect to a and these two terms are decomposed and decomposed in the tangential acceleration and the normal acceleration and the tangential acceleration is a cross r of b with respect to a alpha sorry and and the normal acceleration is omega squared multiplied by r uh, of b with respect to a in the negative direction um, because it's pointing towards b towards a sorry so that's why it's negative uh, for the instantaneous uh, center of zero velocity we have uh, three different options to identify and it's convenient because if we identify that point so our whole system is just rotation if, at that instant so how do we identify uh, so we have um, three different options really so one is in general when we have two velocities so the velocity of two points and B so that will be point in B and point A so then we cross some perpendicular lines at B with perpendiculars with respect to the velocity and A and the point of intersection of these two lines is the instantaneous center so from here any um, position can be identified as um, the velocity is the velocity of any point p is equal to uh, r with respect to the instantaneous center of point p so let me write it the other way of p with respect to the instantaneous center multiplied by omega Um, but that will be in magnitude and in direction so that will be omega cross r of p with respect to the instantaneous center uh, the second case is when we have two velocities that are parallel so the two velocities are parallel so this line and this line so we just draw a line in between these two uh, point and um, then from the velocity arrows we tr trace another line and that will give us uh, the instantaneous center of zero velocity so we'll have to use a little bit of geometry to find this so this is the velocity at a vector and this is the velocity at b vector now for uh, another option well in this situation they are pointing in different direction so the instantaneous center is in between the two and the second uh, possibility um, is that uh, they are pointing in the same direction to, so the instantaneous center is out of the body so but we just uh, trace um, the line connecting the two points and then, then the same thing we just uh, join the two arrows of the velocity but then we prolong that line until it intersects to this line <clears throat> so those are the possibilities to locate the instantaneous center of velocity now um, let me go with this example so uh, let's repeat some of the slides in there so which is the chapters that we cover in class um, so we have a, an example of a couple of gears um, so the a gear are two elements that are rotating and uh, the point of contact in between the two they is shared by the two gears so they are in contact so the velocity of this of point 
with respect to A and point with respect to B is the same. Okay, so that position is the same, so the velocity is the same at one instant. So then the point is moving away, but at that instant the velocity is the same. <clears throat> so, and if this is rotating in this direction, so that will be rotating in that direction. Now, in this example, we have um, gear A and gear B. And A is rotating to uh, 20 radians per second. And um, the acceleration is 40 cubed. So it's given in terms of time. And T is in seconds. And the um, initial angular acceleration of A is 20 radians per second. So this is the initial. So this is the uh, uh, zero at the sub, the sub zero. So the angular velocity. Uh, so we need to find the angular velocity and angular displacements of gear B after two seconds. So what happened after two seconds to gear B in terms of the angular displacement and, ang and angular velocity. So what shall we do in this case? So we need to apply the kinematic equations uh, for angular acceleration. So given the deceleration is, is, in term, is in terms of time, so we can apply kinematic relationships. And then we found the relationship of the angular motion in between gears A and gears B at this point. And then uh, once we have the information of omega and alpha for B, we can just evaluate at two seconds. So first we need to analyze A and then move to B. Okay, for gear A, the angular velocity so angular velocity so how do you start this problem so the information that you have here is that the angular velocity is in terms of time so it's not constant so if you want to go you have to integrate so you start from the definition of angular velocity in terms of of angular acceleration in terms of angular velocity so which is alpha equals to dw, d, d omega dt. So you can do separation of variables. So this dt is moved to the left hand side and integrate. So you integrate the left hand side with respect to time. So from zero to two seconds. And in the right hand side uh, from omega sub zero to omega. So this integral in the right hand side is straightforward. So it is because it's the integral of one. So which is omega evaluated in omega and omega zero. So you have omega minus omega zero. The left hand side you have alpha, but alpha is given by 40 cube. So you replace alpha by 40 cube. Then the four is a constant, so it came out. And then the integral of t cube is t to the fourth divided by four and you have to evaluate in between 2 and 4 um, this 4 cancel so you have um, t to the 4th evaluated in between 0 and between 2 and 0 so this evaluated in, in 2 is 2 to the 4th evaluated in 0 is 0 so this is minus 0 so 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 4 times 4 16 so one side is mm, the left hand side is this and the right hand side is this so which i have here so omega <clears throat> minus omega sub zero is equal to 16. so um we can solve for omega so we have that omega is equal to 16 plus omega zero uh, we know what is omega zero so we evaluate and we found that omega is equal to 36 and um, that means that omega for A, for gear A it, at two seconds is 36 radians per second. Now we can proceed with the angular displacement. So we start from the last equation that we have to before evaluated at three. So it's like, 
we just keep this um, equation evaluated at three uh, without evaluation All right omega minus uh, so when we have this uh, without evaluation at the time so we have is just four t to the four divided by four the four cancels so it's just t to the four so before evaluating so we have omega minus omega sub zero so this is the equation before evaluating <clears throat> because once we evaluate we just have number we cannot use it to uh, uh, find the uh, relationship with uh, the uh, angular displacement so we solve for omega which is t to the four plus omega sub zero and the definition of omega is the td the theta dt so we can't um, use separation of variables so we move this dt to the right hand side so which is what i did here and we integrate back the left hand side with respect to theta so the limits are from zero to theta and the right hand side with respect to time because time is the variable omega sub zero is known and it's a constant so we integrate this so this is t to the fifth divided by five plus omega sub zero t and everything is evaluated in between zero and two after you replace for two evaluated at zero is zero evaluated at two is t is two to the fifth divided by five omega sub zero which is 20 multiplied by t which is two so that will be 46.4 radians now we have omega and we have alpha and well alpha was given and we have theta at um at two seconds so we can move into this position so and see what happened at gear b so in this position we know that the velocity with respect to a or with respect to b is the same so b a equal to v b and the velocity is given by the uh, by omega so omega multiplied by omega a multiplied by the radius of a so this multiplied by omega is equal to this um, radio multiplied by this omega in magnitude it should match so we replace values the only unknown is omega b and we solve for omega b and we have that omega b is 12 radians per second and the angular displacement is um, is the same thing is uh, uh, theta b so this is so this is theta b which is the angle multiplied by the radius should be equal to this angle here multiplied by this radius so this displacement should be the same displacement there so theta b multiplied by rb is equal to theta a multiplied by ra we solve for theta b which is the only unknown and we found that theta b is equal to uh, 15.46 radians okay so this is an example with gears and kinematics uh, for chapter 17 uh, i won't cover much in this review we have the video so you can review the videos but uh, we cover moment of inertia planar kinetic uh, uh, equations of motions and their general rotational motion and um, general motion so remember that the moment of inertia uh, is the property of a body that tell us how the mass is distributed about uh, an axis so um, the definition is that the moment of inertia is r square where r is the distance from a piece of mass um, multiplied by dm so it is like the weight uh, and this is r square because uh, if we just do the integral without the square it will cancel out so um, so r square multiplied by dm and we integrate over the whole body and that's the moment of energy and we have quite a few defined in the book 
Uh, I'm not going to ask in the exam to calculate the moment of inertia, so you don't worry about computing um, um, 3D integrals. Okay. Okay, so the moment of inertia is given in the books uh, and in the tables with respect to an axis, which is the um, the G axis, which is the center of Mars axis. Now, in general, we need to find the moment of inertia with respect to an, another axis, which is parallel to the um, axis of the moment of inertia that passes through, through uh, the center of mass. So that moment of inertia is equal to the moment of inertia passing through this axis plus the total mass multiplied by the distance squared. And so for a compound object, we just can add the moment of inertia of the parts. To these two, however, you should know how to do it. And these are some of the examples of moment of inertia. And in class, um, we took this, uh, we used uh, the parallaxis theorem to compute um, um, the moment of inertia through the x prime or the x prime which is um, where is the x prime here okay so these are the plan equations of motion so if we have just rectilinear translation so we have the sum of forces in x is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration of the center of mass in x the sum of the forces in y is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration of the center of mass in y and the sum of the moments about the center of mass should be equal to zero because it is not rotating. If we have a curvilinear translation, the best way to go is with the normal and tangential coordinate system, which is basically the same thing. Some of the forces in the normal direction equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration of the center of mass in the normal direction and the sum of the forces in T is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration of the center of mass in the T direction. The same way, there is no translation, so the sum of the moments about the uh, center of mass should be equal to zero. Now, in a more general way, we have a rotation about a fixed axis. So we are adding uh, an additional element, which is the sum of the moments in G is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by alpha. But if we are taking a different point but the center of mass, so we should compute the moment of inertia with respect to that point multiplied by alpha. Uh, that actually is translated as in this way. So this is the moment of inertia in G multiplied by alpha, so the one that we get in the tables multiplied by alpha, plus this part that is the moment, the mass multiplied by the acceleration um, of the center of mass in the tangential direction, multiplied by D, which is the distance in between the axes that we are uh, using. <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, the general form of the sum of the moments about any possible excess. So with this, I conclude this uh, short review. Um, do you have any questions, please let me know. Work on the problems that I left for homework. I will publish uh, the solution of those problems. Mm, but let me know if you have um, any question related to any of the problems, if you don't understand anything. Okay, thank you.